Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the end of Kerbal Space Program, a series in which I endeavor to find the end game in KSP. As per usual, we are in CCAN adding a mod. Today's mod will be USI Life Support, Umbra Space Industries Take on Life Support. There's also an update to stage recovery. Unfortunately, modular colonization is not on CCAN. I'm not sure why this is, and Rover Dude, the developer of the USI series, uh, hasn't stated that in his main post. So we're going to be adding it manually. It appears that was an older version, 0.14, and the newer version is 0.18. So let's update it. This is why I like CCAN. I'm not sure if this isn't on CCAN because of a problem with CCAN or uh, if it's something with um, MKS. Uh, I don't see any mention of it within the last like five pages um, of the thread. There's six pages. And I've searched this before and I still haven't found anything. So apparently on March 9th, it's currently the 18th, uh, it was working fine in CCAN, but it just doesn't show on my list at all. Copy everything over. this for all current items, yes. Okay. I've had about a week to play around with MKS and build a station. Unfortunately, there's a problem with this after I weld it together, it causes game freezes on staging and just way too much lag. Um, I think more than pre-weld, so I'm going to try launching the pre-weld later um, to fulfill that contract that we had, the orbital station around Kerbin. I demonstrated the problems that it was having in a live stream that I did on Monday, where the main focus of the live stream was to build a cargo SSTO. I initially went with a angled wing design, which didn't work out and I couldn't figure out why uh, it was rolling to the left. So I rebuilt the entire craft and ended up with a ship that was too heavy and didn't have enough power in the middle part of the atmosphere. I tried turning all of the engines on, but still that wasn't enough thrust. I even added uh, a giant turbofan, the Goliath, to the top of the craft and I was still only able to get to 12 kilometers. So I think the main problem with the SSTO is that I don't have high thrust, high altitude engines, although it could be uh, air intake problem as well as a weight problem. I think it's a mixture of all of these. It's pretty far from being an SSTO without the cargo, let alone being a VTOL SSTO with cargo, which is what I'm kind of aiming for. So it's time to upgrade the research and development facility. Oof, uh, we only have 331,000 left. Ooh, experimental aerodynamics. That's a long cargo bay. I could use that. Ooh, and the Mark II to, or Mark three to two. So yeah, I want that one. And I want hypersonic. Is that the rapier? No, the whiplash. That'll at least get us uh, and a pre-cooler. There we go. Our advanced science tech so we can start mining. Don't care too much about ion propulsion. I think we'll get metamaterials. And we'll get very heavy rocketry along with high performance fuel systems. We're also gonna get advanced motors because I want this uh, rugged vehicular wheel. And advanced unmanned tech as well. We'll grab automation 
to complete this contract, we need two scientists in here, which we have. Um, I'm probably going to need to put some supplies on here. Life support tank, 1.25. And we'll just stick that on top of the prettiest canister. How long will that give us? That should be fine. Why does it say the batteries only give us one day? All right, so I got everything set up and we're just barely going to be able to afford to launch this. So hopefully that contract gives us enough money to um, put some habitation modules on this so we can keep these guys in orbit. If not, we'll have to send up something to grab them and deorbit them. I guess they are, they, they just turn into tourists rather than dying. So maybe we don't have to worry too much about them. That took a lot less time to load in. So it definitely is something with the welded part. I gotta figure out what that is. Without any further ado, let's get this thing into orbit. Okay, that's going to fill the contract. We are officially in orbit. Yep, there it is. That gives us 167. That's not nearly enough. Uh, we did recover. Okay, let's do over the stage. Twenty-one thousand for that stage. Back up to three hundred and sixteen. That's with the contract. Uh, we kind of broke even ish. We need money. Uh, what contracts? Let's see. Do we have currently outstanding? Science data from space around Ike. Uh, what's our window? Carbon to Dunna. Eight days. So that's pretty close. Rugged vehicular wheel on an escape trajectory out of Ike. I guess if we're going to Ike, we can go ahead and throw a wheel on there. Toroidal arrow spike and escape trajectory out of Ike form test. I'm sure, we could take an arrow spike. This is going to be a weird craft, but we need money. Conduct seismic survey of Dunna near Dunna 3X probe. Oh, this is going to be one of those ones. Go here and then go there and then go there. Go. I'll do that off camera right now and get the boost in funding. Okay, it turned out only to be three. So. What is that? 66,000 and then 57 for the completion. And I think we're, there was an advance of like 30 as well. Okay, on to our Kerbin Deno window. In the meantime, I'm gonna do patent licensing, which will take 1,033 science to set up and 35% uh, of our science gains will turn into 2,257 funds per one unit of science. Also, I'm not sure what field work is. Whatever. Unfortunately, because of that bug in MKS, I can't view contracts in the vehicle assembly building, which I kind of need to do to build the craft. So I'm going to go ahead and complete the TT38K radial decoupler and flight above Kerbin before I get to building uh, our ship going to Ike. Unfortunately, completing that contract didn't fix the bug. So it must be an element in the contracts themselves that's causing it. Maybe something to do with having multiple things that need to be achieved. I went ahead and built a craft that will fulfill most of our contracts. I, I believe it'll take out, yeah, four. So we'll just have the plant flag on Minmus. Minmus. 
We are so far from the sun. This is our Jewel System Explorer, the communication satellite that we sent towards Jewel. I can't even tell you how many episodes ago. I think it was 14 or something. That's right, I forgot I set it up so I didn't need to do a circularization burn in case I lost connection. So it looks like we have an encounter with Tylo. I'd have to change our inclination when we get an, the encounter with Tylo. Okay, now that uh, Explorer Mark 1 is in a stable orbit around Joule and we got a little bit of science, we can get back to our Ike Explorer, which has a impact trajectory with Ike. That's kind of weird, that uh, large dish must not be a relay, the um, extendable one of the 8888. Apparently it only provides communication for that craft. Have to keep that in mind next time the deployable ones are like that. Um, so I guess we'll just time warp until we're a little bit closer to Kerbin and our other satellites can acquire a signal. So it looks like we've lost our other two communication satellites and we only have this one uh, Tricom 3 around Ike um, and it's not providing communication. Maybe just every deployable doesn't work as relay, in which case we have no communication with the things that don't have antennas on them. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. Next episode, I probably going to bring some communication to Dunna and uh, start with our efforts to mine some science from it. Not sure I'm going to keep MKS. I'll think on that a little bit. Um, thank you guys for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye bye.